I've seen the light. After filming motiot after motiot from Fedship to Ferretti and from Amsterdam to Antigua, finally I have been invited to film a sailing yacht and Lord above I've been converted. The catalyst of my epiphany is a sensational 105 foot sailing yacht called Child of Lear, launched in 2014. If you know something of Irish mythology, you'll be aware that the children of Lear bathed in Loch Dare Breach, where they were magically turned into swans by a jealous stepmother who had originally planned to kill them. It's a very elegant and intelligent name for a very elegant and intelligent yacht, built in fact by the legendary Nauta Swan shipyard. Where sailing yachts are concerned, I have to say, I've always been somewhat of an agnostic. I mean, I can understand why people believe in them. I've just always felt it's not particularly something for me. Even now, I'm not sure whether it's the world of sailing that's won me over, or rather this specific sailing yacht built for a highly experienced owner who made some very intelligent and very unique additions to this Norta Swan 105, then spotted by her current owner, who's such an experienced sailor that the captain tells me he's made recent history in sailing. So, if you're a faithful follower of sailing yachts, probably some of the things I say in this video you already know, but I can guarantee you this, that some of the things you'll see in this video will fill you with the spirit and the holy desire to become her third owner. It was my colleague Joost Govertz and Captain Alex Corson who put me through the Sunday School of Sailing starting with the sail configuration currently on Child of Lear. The large sail at the forward end of the yacht, called a Genoa sail, is about 250 square metres in size. The mainsail, on the other hand, is called, well, the mainsail, and is over 270 square metres. But what interested me the most about this is that where I previously believed that modern yachts furled this sail into the mast, Captain Alex and Joost explained to me that furling it into the boom is a much better system. As you can imagine, this sail is a considerable weight on board, 308 kilograms in fact, and furling it into the mast positions that weight at a fairly high point, which is really not ideal. By furling it into the boom, it's kept in a lower position, keeping the centre of gravity nice and low. I should also add that the sail that we used was brand new, so during filming we were able to commission it. The cables that you can see here are called stays, and on Child of Lear they were made from carbon fibre. Not only do these give essential support to the mast, but I was interested to learn that the aft stays and fore stays can actually bend the mast. The yacht has what's called a real-time adjuster that adjusts the tension of the fore stay to give greater control over the position of the mast. Most yachts have an adjustable back stay. Not many benefit from an adjustable fore stay. I was starting to see the appeal of sailing. I had no idea it was so technical. Actually, Child of Lear is a very technically advanced vessel. Captain Alex was telling me that he can literally sail it alone if he just has some help getting in and out of the berth. That is quite remarkable for a yacht of this size, but made possible in part by these large hidden winches called captive winches. These hydraulically powered units, each one costing the price of a small car, can lift and lower the sails at the touch of a button. 
I was learning though that sailing is not about touching buttons. It really is about getting involved. So on our sea trial, these lines called sheets will run to large winches round the aft cockpit so that the crew could enjoy the experience of sailing one of the world's most magnificent yachts in its class. There's so much about this yacht that can be operated by the touch of a button or with a more hands-on approach. There are two steering quadrants, for example. One of them is for the autopilot and that's hydraulic. The other one from the helm wheel is direct steering and that's what I'm actually doing right now. Now, Joost and Alex speak with such enthusiasm when they talk about the tension you can feel in the helm wheel as the wind conditions change and how with a slight alteration to the sheets, you can make the hull dip and rise, lengthening the waterline length and as a result, increasing speed and performance. They talk with great joy about the way that a small crew work together, learning to think what other people are thinking about as weather conditions change so they can squeeze every fraction out of a knot, gleaning it from the wind. And then Joost said something to me I'll never forget. He said, a motor yacht is about getting where you want to go so you can drop the anchor and enjoy a cocktail. A sailing yacht, that's about the getting there. That's where the fun is. That's not to say that Child of Lear is not equally impressive at anchor. Let me show you around for a moment. But for those of you who usually change channel when I show the cabins, don't go anywhere. The master stateroom on this yacht has a feature so impressive, you just would never guess it. The cockpit area on Child of Lear really is far more luxurious than on most of the sailing yachts I've ever seen. Much more spacious too, with these generously proportioned sofas creating an open lounge area. An interesting couple of additions were made to the yacht when it was built so that the owner could fully benefit from this. Firstly, a door was added to the port side of the superstructure so that the captain could exit the navigation station without walking through the middle of the cockpit when the owner may be talking to guests. But look at this too. Something I have certainly never seen before. A second helm station forward of the mast so that the captain can navigate from here if the owner wishes privacy in the cockpit while the yacht is underway. The main entrance into the yacht through this sliding door reveals a beautiful inside lounge decked in walnut woods and with custom furnishings, silk carpet and plenty of natural light letting the sunshine in and procuring magnificent panoramic views. Let's move to the bow though, where the crew quarters are located. Child of Lear can run well with a crew of four in two cabins, after which is a neat and useful crew mess. And then further aft still, there is another cabin that can be used for guests or for more crew. And another area with a washer and a dryer. The galley is to starboard and the captain told me that a Michelin star chef once cooked for 25 people from this very spot. Moving back through the lounge, a separate stairwell takes you to the guest accommodation where there is a sumptuous twin stateroom with an ensuite bathroom and a VIP stateroom that is equally sumptuous and also benefits from an ensuite bathroom. I did tell you that the master stateroom was worth waiting for though, so at this point I will shut up and just let you enjoy it. I did tell you, didn't I? Actually, there is so much about this yacht that really did surprise me. Apart from the incredible master stateroom, the captain also told me that they once reached 19 and a half knots of speed. That's powered only by the wind. And speaking of the wind, he also told me that once on their way back from Cuba, they hit gusts of 65 knots. The structural integrity of these Norte Swan yachts is legendary. A motor yacht of the same size just couldn't do that. 
I really do need to learn more about this field of yachting, but it's the deep passion and great knowledge of Yoast that makes him the ideal representative for the owner of Child of Lear who would like to sell her. If you could see yourself as being the next owner of this incredible yacht, it will be Yoast's contact details that are on screen in a moment.